Okay, guys, so this is going to be our video that's going to focus on the uh, cerebellum and the brainstem. So let's start off with just some big overview and kind of figure out where we're at and what we're looking at. So last class and last video, we focused on all of this portion here going around the outside. That's the cerebrum with all the cerebral cortex and all the ridges and all that portion. Okay, uh, Then you have the corpus callosum that connects the two sides. Okay, the two cerebral hemispheres. And then everything below this here is going to be our brainstem going in this direction, and then the cerebellum kind of off the back here. Okay? Uh, so that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, today. In the four main parts of our brainstem, we're going to have the diencephalon up here, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla are already labeled on here. Uh, so we're going to look at each of those pieces as we go forward. So let's talk about the cerebellum. So it gets its name because it's kind of the small brain below the occipital lobe. Um, and just like the cerebrum, it's divided into two halves called hemispheres. So we got that same vocab, hemispheres. And it's covered in an outer layer of gray matter um, that we call the cerebellar cortex. You'll need to be careful there, right? Cerebral cortex versus cerebellar cortex. You'll need to be kind of careful of those two. Okay? And what does the cerebellum do for us? Well, it is really... Um, a fine-tuning of muscles area, right? So this is a big part of what keeps us upright. So just sitting in class and keeping your head upright and walking down the hallway that you don't kind of lean forward. Those are your posture muscles, okay? Um, but it also fine-tunes every conscious and subconscious movement of your body. So walking down the hallway, this part of the brain is getting constant information from your muscles and from your inner ear about our balance and all these different areas come in and it kind of gives us constant feedback and progress reports. So if we start walking down the hall, we start leaning a little bit to the right, the cerebellum is the part that will actually get that information and then be able to kind of send out a command that kind of makes us kind of, uh, you know, contract our, our left side of our core and we kind of stand a little more upright and we kind of go back that way. Um, and uh, all of this, again, is kind of accomplished by processing lots of sensory information coming in, the in about how our body is doing. How are we actually doing in a particular movement and making adjustments? Um, if you are, um, if you want to think of the cerebellum as the two easy ways to think of the cerebellum, uh, the cerebellum is what really makes a, um, an athlete a phenomenal athlete. Um, so Ted Williams is the greatest hitter of all time. His cerebellum is probably far more developed than the average person. The ability to actually see a baseball coming in and uh, recognize that it's breaking and I have to change my swing and a little bit of an in, and just that little bit of instant adjustment to those types of things um, happens because of the cerebellum. Uh, the other way to visualize what the cerebellum does is it is the first area that is impacted in your body by alcohol. So if you've ever seen a person who is drunk, who the person's been drinking um, in any way, and you see the slurred speech, that's because the cerebellum is not able to help the mouth move in the proper way to speak. Um, you see somebody like staggering around, it's because the cerebellum is not helping a person walk upright or control their muscles in that way. Um, so that, those are the two ways that I usually like to pound home the idea of what the cerebellum actually does for us. It, it's a really important part of maintaining... Um, movements and adjusting, making small little tweaks to our movements all day long. So here's just a little side view of the cerebellum. You get to see this really well when we do the sheep brain, uh, but you'll notice here's the gray matter around the outside and the white matter along the inside. Uh, so the processing would happen in the gray matter around the outside, the part that I'm having fun coloring, and all of the signals are sent in and out through the white matter along the inside. Okay? And you'll notice it sits right back on the side of the brainstem here, on the back edge of this brainstem. So all the information coming in, so if I'm walking, um, signals can, uh, about how I'm doing can fly right up through the spinal cord, up to this brainstem in here, and then the commands can go right back out uh, to adjust my muscles very quickly. It's even shorter than going all the way up to the cerebrum up here, uh, so it makes our responses even quicker. So let's move on to the brainstem now. Okay, so the very, part, uh, <clears throat> the very top part of the brainstem is called the diencephalon. Okay, uh, so it's right underneath that corpus callosum. So you can see that here. So this part that I'll cover, color in red for us. This is the whole diencephalon. Okay, and the diencephalon has two portions: the thalamus and the hypothalamus. So the thalamus is is the most important role for us. It's a relay station for sensory information entering the cerebrum. Um, so as this information comes up, so uh, if I touch something, 
Okay, I touch this table that I'm sitting at right now. Um, that information comes from the receptors in my fingers, go, it goes in through those nerves we've talked about, into that brachial plexus that we've talked about, into the brain, into the spinal cord, up through the brain stem, all the way up to the top of the brain stem to the thalamus, and the thalamus is the part that's smart enough to send that to that primary sensory part of my brain. Um, without the thalamus, I wouldn't actually get those impulses sent to the right area, and I wouldn't really understand what I was um, experiencing. Okay, Vision uh, comes in, and the thalamus is smart enough to send it to that visual area of the occipital lobe. Okay, so really important um, job here for the thalamus is sort and send all the information to the appropriate areas. The hypothalamus is this kind of multi-purpose area. Uh, we've talked about it with body temperature homeostasis. That's where your central thermoreceptors are located. Uh, but it's also involved in our sleep-wake cycles called the circadian rhythms. Um, helps with the autonomic responses of the brain stem. So think the rest of the brain stem, like heart rate, which is going to be mostly controlled by the medulla, but the hypothalamus helps. It, it's involved with things like hunger and thirst and sex drives and things like that. Um, one way to think about this, most people characterize this as the most primal area of our brain. Um, this is our most animalistic part of the brain. So if we keep moving down the brain stem, as we keep going down this brain stem here, um, one of the key things to remember is that they are going to have ascending and descending tracks just like your spinal cord do. Some of the information is just going to pass right through all these parts. It'll, you know, coming from the spinal cord, it will go right by the medulla, right by the pons, right by the midbrain, right through that diencephalon, all the way to the thalamus, and the thalamus will sort and send it to the area we want to, okay? But within those areas, there also are some cool things, right? So the mesencephalon, I prefer midbrains, so we're going to use that, is our spot for visual and auditory reflexes. So if you ever had a really loud noise go off near you, your head automatically whips around before you're even aware of it. That's called the auditory reflex, okay? Uh, the visual reflex has to do with any fast-moving object. So if I throw something across the classroom in front of you, your eyes are, are kind of hardwired. Your brain is kind of hardwired for your eyes to track and see what that is because both of those things can be dangerous to you. So we have reflexes to quickly identify, is that dangerous to me? What is that noise? What is that movement? And identify it. The pons, with the pons, we really want to just focus on the respiratory. This is our main respiratory center. It's going to work with the medulla in some areas, um, but this is our main respiratory center. Right? And then the last section, this is the very bottom, so this is the part that's going to connect to the spinal cord, is our medulla oblongata. Right? And I often refer to it as the vital reflex center. I think that's the nicest way to simplify it down. So things like vasomotor, the vasoconstriction, vasodilation that we control our blood pressure with and our body temperature, that comes from the medulla. Your cardiac center, a little respiratory helps with the pons of that area. Uh, so a lot of that is just stuff that kind of keeps you alive from that standpoint. Right? And then these areas are other important areas, but they're throughout the brain stem. Okay? So we got this reticular activating center, and that's our level of alertness. Uh, so how aware of the world you are. So when you're sleeping, that area is kind of shutting down. When you're awake, that area is far more active. Uh, and then you have the limbic system, which is just little emotional areas that are all throughout the brainstem um, that can that tie your emotions back to memories and, and all sorts of things like that. So we think of that as like the emotional part of our brain. Okay? So those are the portions of the brainstem that we want to make sure we see. So going from the bottom up, we have our medulla. Then we have go up a step. We got the mid uh, the pons, midbrain, up to the hypothalamus and then thalamus, which the two of those together make up the diencephalon. And on this page, to just kind of wrap it up, we'll do the exact same thing here. So if a signal were coming into the brain, it would come up from the spinal cord, which would be down here, come up through the medulla, up through the pons, the midbrain, the um, hypothalamus, up to the thalamus, and then this thalamus, if the relay station could send it to, if it's vision, it would send it back here to the occipital lobe, um, if it was touch information, it would send it right up here. Okay, so we've got all these different spots where the thalamus can relay it. Okay, and vice versa, commands coming out, if we want to move something from this primary motor area, it would start here, pass through all those same areas right on the way out to the, get to the spinal cord and out to the body. So that's going to wrap up our video on the cere uh, cerebellum and the brainstem. Um, as always, make sure you've marked what you want to talk about, and I'll see you in class.